President Biden is wrapping up his trip. He is uh, just in a moment going to be leaving there. So what did he accomplish first, of course, in Saudi Arabia just recently? But right before that, he was in Israel. And joining us now to talk about all of this, we're so honored to have him here, the former Prime Minister of Israel, Ehud Olmert. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, it's so great to have you here. It's such an honor to see you again, you. my friend. Thank you, Rita. Uh, it's beautiful to have you here. What did you make of President Biden in your country? How do you think his visit went there? Well, I think um, everyone was very happy uh, to have President Biden. He has been a friend of Israel for over 40 years, actually 50 years. Uh, he was elected uh, first time in 1973, and I think that shortly after his election, he came to visit Israel, and he reminded us of his visit then with the then Prime Minister Golda Meir. So you're talking about someone that has been to Israel many times. I met him many times while uh, I was Prime Minister and, uh, and Mayor of Jerusalem. And uh, I think uh, there is no question that he is a friend of Israel. And there was not a great expectation about any dramatic um, agreement that may erupt out of this uh, uh, visit. Uh, we have uh, some differences about how to deal with the Iranian uh, uh, nuclear threat. The uh, president wants to have an agreement with Iran, and there are some Israelis that uh, share this um, attitude with him, but many, uh, including the uh, present government, uh, are not. So uh, it was discussed, but I don't think that there was any particular uh, agreement. But... Uh, the main thing uh, which struck the emotions of everyone was his visit to Yad Vashem, which is the memorial to the uh, victims of the Holocaust. Uh, and there he was just uh, on his knees uh, bowing down to um, uh, two uh, old uh, survivors uh, that were uh, visiting with him in the uh, uh, Yad Vashem. And this moment of the President of the United States of America lowering his head uh, to respect the uh, survivors and his uh, emotional story about how he uh, brought all of his uh, family members, including all of his grandchildren, to one of the uh, concentration camps in Dachau uh, so that they will learn about the lessons of history of what happened uh, was something that uh, uh, reached every heart of every Israeli. It was very moving. Yeah, and you know, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, I've been there to Yad Vashem too. It is so powerful. I encourage everybody to go so we never, ever, ever forget. Um, you know, I, I want to ask your thoughts about Iran. You touched on Iran. And you brought up the point that there was a bit of differences, and we even saw it publicly when President Biden came out and he talked more about the diplomatic route. Um, your current prime minister, who's just been there, as everybody knows what, it's just been a few weeks, there's been a lot of changes yeah, there in Israel of late. And Prime Minister Lapid came out and he said, you know what, basically almost the time for diplomacy and words, we need more. Um, we need a concrete sort of military plan. He said, we need a credible military solution. How do you feel and are you deeply concerned about the threat of Iran? As so many people, I know you are, you've been very integral um, and obviously Israel's security for so many years. What are your thoughts? Well, definitely we are all very much concerned about the Iranian uh, threat. There is no question, everyone. The question is, how do we approach it? So, number one, uh, the, uh, Israel has been involved in ways which I can't share with you, but I can only say to you that uh, if uh, Iran doesn't uh, possess nuclear capacity in 2022, uh, this is largely because of things which were accomplished and done uh, by many, uh, primarily by us, in order to prevent it. I think, I think, this is my, I, I didn't meet with the president, I didn't talk to him, but I know him very well. And I have no doubt that there is um, an American military plan somewhere ready 
for the eventuality that the Iranians will develop uh, in spite of all their commitments and in spite of a potential agreement that may be signed between Iran and the United States, if and when Iran will, in spite of this, uh, develop um, uh, or reach very close to the uh, actual uh, possession of nuclear capacity, I'm sure that uh, the United States has a military plan ready uh, for that eventuality. Uh, they wouldn't say it now, and I don't think that they should say it now while they are negotiating with the Iranians. But to the best of my acquaintance with the policymaker and the uh, military leaders of the United States, and I dealt with them when uh, uh, we destroyed the atomic reactor in uh, Syria in 2007, America has a military contingency in the event that Iran will uh, violate the agreement. So uh, I think that the difference between perhaps Israel and America at this stage is whether we should now make an announcement or wh whether instead of an agreement there should be an immediate military attack on Iran. Uh, there is a difference, apparently, between America and the present government of Israel. Uh, but I accept what the president said. He said America will never allow Iran to have a nuclear capacity, and Israel will never be left alone uh, in the world in as long as America exists. And I think that these two commitments make a certain sense about uh, the... Uh, the proportions of the Iranian threat on this matter. Yeah, and certainly so many people are watching that. Uh, one other thing, before I let you go, Mr. Prime Minister, I want to ask you about uh, the big move also of the flights from Israel to Saudi Arabia, because yeah. that was the first time that direct flights were allowed, uh, the overflight, Saudi opening the door. <clears throat> um, even President Biden saying that this is basically an extension of President Trump's Abraham Accords of the relations between Israel and Arab neighbors. We saw it with the UAE and Bahrain. Uh, what do you expect about Israel and Saudi relations now? Is this the, the opening of a door? Well, first of all, President Biden was very gracious to President Trump, uh, I mean, referring the uh, significance of the uh, Abraham Accords, which were signed at the time of President Trump. There is no question about it. Uh, I think that the president is now um, uh, encouraging uh, a major move forward with the Saudis, and the uh, flights from Israel to Saudi Arabia with uh, clergy people to start with, and with visitors to the Hajj, you know, to, the, uh, to Mecca, uh, is a, 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 a formal and, and a public expression of relations which were developed uh, over a period of time, and to which the President, uh, President Biden contributed in the last few months a great deal. So when the uh, actual flights will take place, it will be a realization of a process which has been building for uh, quite some time. It is very important. To be honest, I think that we have very friendly relations with Saudi Arabia, and it's time that these relations will now become open and formal. And I think that the visit of President Biden in Saudi Arabia and the fact that he was first visiting in Israel and that there is also an architecture of defensive system which has been built between Israel, the Saudis, the Emirates, India and other friends of the United States is something that is significant for uh, this uh, visit of President Biden in the Middle East and he should be very proud of it. Yeah, it sent a very powerful statement. Well, it is so yeah. wonderful to speak with you again. It's an honor to thank have you, you here on Saturday Report. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much. Thank you very much.